Yo, what it is, everybody. Thanks for tuning back in here to another episode here on the Speedbug channel. I figured I'd make a quick introduction and uh, do a quick video about this while I'm outside. Excuse me for the wind, but I will continue the video inside the house. But I wanted to show you the car as I have it out here on the auxiliary driveway in the trailer. Let me flip the camera. So we got the big trailer there and we got Snow White all hooked up to her lifeline here. As you see, that hoe ain't got no heart. So, of course, I already announced the video. It is getting uh, an iron block. It is going full cast iron. Um, it is going to be made out of the new 6.6 uh, six, and then it is punched out. It is going to full 20, uh, 427 cubic inches. So I will give more information on that as I go back into the house. But let me get this joker back in the, uh, into the trailer. And All right, guys. So finishing the video off here in the house and... You guys have seen uh, the last video I made about the engine that's coming along. Um, that is the LTX. It is going to be the iron block, the 427. As you saw here, I showed you some pictures here. Snow White looked like she got a little lift kit here in the front, but no heart at the moment. And uh, I'll include some videos and uh, some images here of what happened exactly and what's going on here with the engine. And uh, now you guys can actually see the carnage now that I actually have the videos and the information after I've taken it apart. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. And it's, uh, it has multiple failure points, which is actually pretty interesting to see, but it uh, had it on its way out either way. Which one was gonna happen first? Well, I don't really think we know, but uh, Either way, I don't, re and again, I don't really know which one happened, but which one happened first, but they both happened at the same track time, the same day. The engine was never down on power or anything like that, but it just, you know, it was time to let go. And that's a clear, you know, point of you know, just, you know, pushing parts too far past its limit. You know, some people say, oh, it's got this knock, has this detonation, this, that. No, the car was on race fuel. The car had, uh, ton of methanol in it. it it you know it wasn't being greedy or anything on the timing and it's just a clear p point of pushing parts you know past way too far and i believe the the bearings with the the crank and rod assembly that i had in it was rated for about 1200 wheels so maybe about 14 or so 100 horsepower and maybe at the crank 1500 horsepower at the crank and i'm not gonna lie i pushed it you know much further than that you know a few times did it live of course it did. Is it going to live forever? Of course not, as we saw that. And as I um, really got a grip on the belt slip uh, with this blower and really was able to spin it and really, you know, put some real force, you know, behind, you know, this blower making some good CFM inside of the engine. This is, you know, what, what happened. And uh, I made that uh, night before the racetrack, it was 10 dyno pulls to get the tune exactly where i wanted it to be and i think there was only one pull where i think it made like 980 wheel or something like that and i think i let out at like 4,000 rpm and for the ones that know that it's a centrifugal blower you know it never really falls off so i was roughly shifting the car about 7,200 rpm and so you could pretty much know where, where it's where it's going from there peak torque was i think at like 6,500 or so car's got a big cam in it and again it's a race car um it's just you know just doesn't really look like it's disguised um with with a factory body but uh I, you know it doesn't have good drivability or anything like that it's big, you know big converter but it spends its entire life in solely and only on the racetrack so um dialing in that drivability and stuff down low was never really an issue for me because a car pretty much only time it's not on the floor is when it's coming back around to the pits or coming out of the trailer but anyway, so uh, you can see uh, here, and I'm going to show you something right now, some of the parts of the carnage of what's going on with the engine. You can see the valve seats let go inside of the head. So that's the, the you know, one part here. And then when the valve seats let go, it obviously got hot. Again, I knew I was pushing this thing well past the 1200 horsepower mark. And there you go. And then the valve let go. Now, did the valve actually break and let go because the valve seat broke? or did the valve actually let go and then cause the valve seat to break? Texas Speed, which is the manufacturer of these heads, uh, they told me right at around the 1100 uh, horsepower mark that uh, the valve seat should let go. So I do believe that it was a combination truly and solely of both. I don't just believe that it was 
just the valve or the valve seats. I really do believe it was both. But other than that, the rest of the cylinder head looked fine, except for the one where the valve seat fell all the way out, and uh, it got pretty beat up. Uh, moving on over, uh, and as you can see, beat up a little bit of the piston and a little bit of the cylinder, but that's okay, no problem. It, uh, the block and all that is perfectly savable. And then moving lower, further down, I really thought that the oil pump also died, but as a, upon further inspection, I took it apart. Everything looks good, no crazy wear. The lubrication system and everything was still doing its job, but it, when it did lose oil pressure, and I checked a lot of the uh, connecting rods, not a lot of bearing material left there. And that's where that joker was clunking. So it definitely lost um, oil pressure in the connecting rod. And it also spun a uh, main cap bearing on the crankshaft itself. Uh, from the most parts and the looks of it, the crankshaft seems to be okay. I don't have any pictures of the crankshaft in the, in the connecting rod. But I will show you some of the damage here done to the block. But that's what's kind of going on there. And it's just a clear point of, you know, getting it pushed too far. So as of all the engine builders and individuals that I've spoken to about building this thing to the next engine. I've pretty much built this thing to the highest capacity that you can while still running uh, water inside of the block. After that, I pretty much have to go to a, a billet block and it's my choice if I want to use wet or dry heads. Um, but it will automatically be a dry deck. But this is still all water. This one's rated just about to 3,000 horsepower. I should not see 3,000 horsepower, so I should be able to make this one last a little bit longer. But again, you beat on an anvil long enough, it's going to break. So when I get the new one in, I get my new jewelry. You guys will know when I start sending the old one off, I am going to rebuild it and have a spare engine. It will be an aluminum block, billet rods, pistons, crank. But again, probably only good to about 1,500 horsepower. At least I'll have a spare engine in case one breaks. And I do break the, the LME iron block, which is also going to be upgraded. I mean, that is a, a LTX 427, which I am actually going to punch out my aluminum block to a 427 as well. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you for another episode here when I got this joker back together. Peace.